Hi, this video is going to be on tips on how to manage patients with a limited mouth opening. So tip one, always use a mouth prop or you know we call it a bite block. Um, the three types of bite blocks, uh, I don't recommend to use an adult size for patients with limited mouth opening. An adult size is for patients with a normal mouth opening. Uh, we would like to use them for long uh, or time-consuming procedures, just that uh, we don't want the patient to get tired, so we use them there. What about patients with a uh, small mouth? I prefer to use a child size. And uh, patients with Christmas where uh, the opening is really small, I prefer to use a small child, okay, because the mouth opening is really small. There's no point trying to force in a, a, a larger size uh, by block. Okay, so the points you need to note, just three points. One, uh, always place the bite block on the opposite side of the working side. Second, tell your patient to rest on the block, not bite hard. And uh, third, if you can apply Vaseline on the corners of the mouth, it will help with the stretching and uh, keeps the patient at ease, okay? Second, use a rubber dam. I like this rubber dam for posterior teeth especially in patients with a limited opening for a few reasons. Let me name them. One is because I get good uh, access and retraction of the soft tissues. Second, there is no fogging of the mirror. And uh, then you have good vision. And also, the contrast and clarity is very good when you, you work under the rubber dam. I'm going to talk about uh, the clamps uh, just few points about the clamps in these kind of situations. First, um, always take the clamp along with the rubber dam when you're placing it. Don't go for this technique where you actually place the clamp followed by the dam because it's going to be very hard in these situations. Second, if you feel the coronoid notch is interfering with the wing of the clamp, go for a wingless clamp. It's a lot easier to place with a wingless clamp. And then third is uh, the height of the bow, the bow height. Okay, you can see this picture. It clearly shows the different bow height. I always prefer to take the ones with the very shortest height. It gives a lot of access for me to work in, in limited mouth opening patients. Next, coming to mouth mirrors, obviously the rule of thumb is to use a front surface mirror. Okay, what I want to discuss here is the size of the mirrors. The commonly used ones are size 4, size 5. I use size 4 in the practice. But uh, what I recommend you guys to use is size 3. In little difficult cases, size 2. In very complex situations where you have very little access, you cannot see much or there's not much space, you can go for size 1. Let me show you how these size mirrors actually look. I will compare it with a 5 cent coin. You can clearly see. The size 2 and the size 1 are really small, smaller than the size of a 5 cent coin. Next, coming to how you can modify the instruments or instrument related points. First is regarding the hand pieces or the motors, or the motor heads, the size of the motor heads. Always choose motor heads which are smaller in size, more easier, more access and uh, you have a lot of space to work around. Next, coming to the files, the rotary files. Go for shorter ones. Um, when I say shorter, I mean go for short length files. Like uh, you can use a 25, 25 mm file. It's going to be really long. And uh, it's preferred you use a 21 mm length file. Easier to work on the posteriors. And also the more modern instruments, you can see the shank of the instrument is usually about 11 millimeters. But you go to the older version, I'm talking about the Pro Taper Universal, you see the shank is about 14, 13 millimeters. You get about 2 millimeter leeway over there. This is what I was talking about, okay, the shank height. And also, if you notice, I said night high heat treated files because we want to pre curve these files. Easier if you can pre curve files to go and get access into these canals, okay. Pre curving files really help in such situations. Another point to note is uh, finding canals and that initial uh, access into the canal is something we find very difficult. You can use endophile holders. 
The one you see on the left is a full file holder by Zoomax. And uh, these are very convenient and uh, they come in very handy in these kind of situations. Taking x-rays, working length x-rays, I prefer to use electronic apex locators. I use them for all cases, but highly recommended you use them for uh, patients with limited mouth opening because placing your holder, your PID with the film is going to be a little more difficult in situations like this. Last coming to how you can approach, uh, we have the non-conservative approaches. Yes, nowadays we've been moving towards restricted access, conservative access, but in cases like this, it is okay to break the rules. It's okay to go for a non-conservative access, go for larger access because we are scared about, you know, uh, breaking instruments because of inaccessibility for these files. And also shaping. You don't have to go to very large shapings. You can probably, apical shaping can be kept a little more smaller, and third, if the tooth is buccally or, uh, you know, palatally tilted or buccally inverted, you can also opt for other approaches. That is, you can go from the buccal cusp or you can change. You don't have to stick to the regular routine. So these points will really help you manage situations like this.